Welcome to the Phil Steele Plus Tour, and a Happy New Year to you. It's the first uh, Phil Steele Plus Tour for the 2024 season. Got a couple of quick hitters for you today, and uh, we'll get right to them. Uh, let's start with this, the uh, FCS championship game. I'll be watching it. Uh, I know there's NFL going on, but you guys know I'm a college football guy. So I will be watching the FCS championship game, Montana, South Dakota State. Uh, it goes at 2 o'clock Eastern. And that is on Sunday, believe it or not, uh, against the NFL. But when we take a look at this matchup, uh, go back and look at Montana for the season. You know, Clifton McDowell's a guy that's hitting 59%, adequate. But Mark Ronkowski's hitting 68%, better. Better ratio here, 25-4. You look at the run game, I give the edge of South Dakota State. Uh, they're averaging 6.2 yards per carry this year. Montana just 4.3. So I think we got a clear edge on offense here for South Dakota State. While Montana's got a good defense, in fact, they're number two in our ratings. If you take a look here, they're holding the opponents 85 yards per game below their season average. Their offense only putting up 25 yards per game above the season average. That's surprising for a team that's in a championship game. Meanwhile, South Dakota State's number one, though. They're holding opponents to 136 yards per game below their season average. They're plus 172 yards per game over the last four weeks, winning by an average of 40-7. to seven. You look at Montana, I'm not sure if you know, you can tell by these scores, but the Furman game was actually an overtime game. The North Dakota State was also an overtime game. So this is a team that's had to go to overtime twice just to get here. South Dakota State just pummels teams. In fact, if you look at their playoffs the last two years, uh, you can see their wins are by 36, 21, 21, 24, uh, 41, 20, 11. The 11 is the only close one, but if you watch that game, which I did, uh, 40 mile an hour winds really affected the game, kept it close. This one, they don't have to worry about that. And then Albany, 59 to nothing. So it's a team that's only won one playoff game by less than 21 points. They're a dominant team. They've got the clear offensive edge, both running and passing, and the better defense. I know it's 13 and a half, it's a championship game, but I'm not going against the Jackrabbits here. Your quick hitter pick is to take the South Dakota State Jackrabbits minus 13 and a half. That's 2 o'clock on Sunday. Well, let's talk about the college football championship game. What the heck? We'll take a look at that. you got Washington against uh, Michigan. you got two really good teams here. In fact, Washington has been just tremendous as an underdog. Uh, and I like the way that their defense has been playing recently. I want to point this out. Now, of course, during the season, the last four weeks is something I look at a lot. Look at this. My, on the season, they were actually allowing opponents – above their season average. If you went back and added all this up there, 36 above, 53 above, 161 above, 21 above, 10 above, 120 above, all the way down the line, their defense was not great. However, the last four weeks, their defense playing really good. In fact, they're holding opponents to 76 yards per game below their season average. Now, last week, uh, when we talked about the Washington-Texas game, as you recall, I uh, called up Texas, and we'll call it up over here again. Let's get Texas up here. And I pointed out that Texas's secondary was vulnerable. Remember when we picked the over? We had 305, 378, 327, 302, 323. Look at all that red. And naturally, Michael Penix and company had their way with the Texas pass defense, which has been very poor at times. One thing I want to point out to you about Michigan is let's look for all the red numbers we can find on Michigan's defense. How many are you counting there? All right, I'm counting zero. I'm counting a defense that's holding opponents to 105 yards per game below their season average. Uh, I do not see any red numbers passing or running against these guys. That is a nasty defense. Look what they're giving up on the year. 10 points per game, holding opponents to 105 yards per game below their season average. I mentioned Washington's playing better. If Michigan was to get the lead, and I do feel Michigan's a better team, will probably win this game. But that's not the play here. The play is going to be on the total. And the total, we're going to go with under 56 and a half. Now, you've just watched Michigan light it up, or I mean Washington light it up, against a poor Texas pass defense. And in the Oregon game, both teams know they have to score a lot of points to win. And even then, it just got to 65. But look at this. They only had 24 points against Washington State. They only had 22 points against Oregon State. 272 yards, 306 yards. A good defense can't slow them down. This is a good defense for Michigan. So you've got a great defense. You've got a defense playing better. You've got a Michigan team that has been under all year. They're allowing 10 points per game. So I think it's going to be something where I've got Michigan winning a close one. 
Uh, but I'm going to go with under 56 and a half as your second quick hitter. Now, normally, I mean, the NFL's been on a run here. We're, we've won, what, four in a row NFL plays? I normally, I remember when I used to handicap the NFL, and I, I, as you guys know, I don't even watch the NFL anymore. Uh, but uh, this last weekend is always a crapshoot. You've got the inflated lines, playoff need, uh, teams resting players. So we're not going to have any NFL plays for you this week. But I will have an NFL play for you next week. I'll look at all six of the NFL playoff games, come over to my best one, and put it up here just for you guys. So uh, I hope you had yourself a very happy and safe New Year. And I'll be back with you next week with yet another Phil Steele Plus Tour. Two quick hitters for you today, both on the college championship games. And uh, thank you, as always, for taking the Phil Steele Plus Tour with selections.